everybody on TikTok and YouTube Live. Um, yeah, happy Canada Day, everybody. Um, happy to see you. It's a holiday here. Um, yeah, and I guess the States has July 4th, so that's really exciting. So guys, yeah, welcome. We're doing the um, monthly YouTube Live. I answer all the questions that are posted on the Patreon um, groups. So if you'd like to ask me a question, you can definitely post it um, in the Patreon there. So guys, yeah, also, you know, if you don't already know, we do have a mailing list. If you would like to know of any courses that come out, um, any sales that we're having, bundles, um, definitely uh, sign up for that because, uh, yeah, that's how we notify people. And, yeah, guys, we're having a contest. You know it. Yeah. So we get to 100,000 subscribers. Um, yeah. You share our videos, comment what you've manifested using the law of attraction to inspire other people and um, share our videos and so make sure you're subscribed and we're giving away three coaching sessions to one person each one session each um, when we get to 100,000 subscribers so I know we can do it guys I know we can do it we're spreading the word we're sharing and uh, yeah helping people to have a better life right so yeah so guys, I'm really excited. I've got a couple questions here. Um, they're just general questions, general nice questions actually that are that are really exciting actually for me to answer. So we're just going to dive right in. Um, yeah. So the question is, is it better to affirm out loud? Because I read that when you affirm in your head, the ego blocks it, so to speak. Um, I tried both and it seems affirming verbally works better. And I reached a sta stage, pardon me, where I'm at peace with the 3D. Curious about your opinion. Thanks. Well, okay. So anytime that you can engage a lot of your senses, then, you know, you're going to be putting more effort and more attention and more energy towards what you're looking at creating. Okay. So like, here's an example. Okay. So if you are just affirming inside your head, your mind can easily wander off onto something else, you know? So I could be like, Oh, you know what? I intend that Aaron Drew wants to marry me. I intend that I have a good day day to day. Oh, I need to buy eggs. And Oh, you know what? I should go grab that guy. So, you know, when you're just doing it inside your head, you know, roundabout when you're doing things, you know, other thoughts can, creep in right now and that's the same thing if you like say record affirmations and then you on your phone in your own voice and then you put earphones in and, and you listen to them you know and then you're doing other things okay so your mind can easily wander off okay um as far as like you know like me okay whenever i start a new intention a new goal that i've got okay especially if there's a lot of resistance to it and that's what i would say is ego is resistant. So let's say that you've been in a situation that's been really bad for a long time. Like you've just created it. It's terrible. When you say, okay, no, you know what? This is what I'm going to do instead. This is what I'm going to create instead. Sometimes I find myself that there's static in my head and like formulating new thoughts and intentions around that new goal is like, Ugh like, and it just kind of hurts the head a little bit. So I find when I do that, I sit down with pen and paper because when I sit down with pen and paper, I'm thinking about it and then I'm physically writing it. Okay. So it takes, you know, I have to focus on it. I'm, it's less likely that I'm going to be sitting there writing out my intention thinking, Oh, I need to buy milk later today. Do you know what I mean? So, um, the same thing when you like visualize, if you guys are big visualizers, if you visualize your end scene and you make it color, you make it vibrant, you know, you, 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 start imagining what you would smell, see, hear, touch, then, you know, you bring your intention more to life, right? So also when you do intentions, right, um, no matter how you do them, you always want to add in there, what are you going to see, hear, and feel, okay? So if you say manifesting communication with a specific person, right? Constant communication, you know, like I intend that Jerry wants to talk to me every single day. And I feel so incredibly happy and satisfied that he wants to, that he's always reaching out to me and always wanting to talk to me. And, you know, and Jerry tells me, you know, that he absolutely loves talking to me and I make him feel so good. So, you know, put as much of what you're going to see here and feel into your intentions and manifestations because that you make it more real, right? You make it way more real. So 
saying your affirmations out uh, like out loud, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's really good and it's good to think them as well. So, cause your question here is like, is it better to, to affirm out loud? If it's more comfortable for you, absolutely. i never personally do my affirmations out loud because you, I just don't, I do them in my head, um, you know, and, and I'm very focused and very disciplined in my thoughts. Um, but you're, if you like, because you read that when you affirm in your head, the ego blocks it. Well, the ego is just your counter story. So your ego will get in the way, whether you're thinking it or writing it down or saying it out loud. So don't intend that your ego gets in the way. In fact, it's the opposite intent. I've got zero blocks and resistance intent. No matter how I do my affirmations and intentions, I always get what I want. Right? So Every single thought has the potential to create, okay? But if it makes you feel better to do it out loud, then absolutely, that works for you. Absolutely do it. Because um, that's really the name of the game with this here. Do you know what I mean? Is to, you know, basically do what's comfortable to you. So, um, yeah, either way that you do it, just do the way that's comfortable to you. If you don't need to visualize, you can just do intentions. I never visualize. I never do sats. I just do, you know, intentions, just intentions, meaning I just focus my thoughts more on what I want. So like, for instance, I was talking to somebody today and they were going on about <laughs> the planes and like how the airlines are canceling flights. And I was like, you know what? I'm and in the conversation. I said to the person, I said, you know, I would rather just focus on the positive of what I want to happen. My flight's going to be fine. Our flight's going to be fine. Everything's going to work out. Okay. You know, and it's just focusing on what you want rather than what you don't want. Okay. Whether it's in your verbal conversation, whether it's in your thoughts, whether it's you talking to yourself out loud, you know, and, and the inner conversations, right? Like when you have an inner conversation, um, you know, we all have them constantly. Are we fighting with a person like, Oh, you know what? They said that to me and I should have said this and I can't believe I didn't do that. Right. I mean, that is creating those are intentions as well. You may not want to create that, but those are still considered intentions and affirmations, right? So, an intention affirmation is just simply a thought. So just focus your thoughts on what you want. And yeah, if it's better for you and less resistance, saying it out loud and the little voice doesn't fight with you as much, awesome. That's why I use the word intention because when I go to create something, intention means goal, plan, aim. So when I say I intend, you know, something, then for me, that's quiet little voice. But if I de declare something like I am 120 pounds, automatically my brain goes, no, you're not <laughs> like you are not. You are definitely not, you know, and then the fight starts in my head. But if I say I intend to be 120 pounds, that's the same power as saying I am. And I don't get that little fight in my head. So I use the word I intend. If saying things out loud works for you, then that's excellent. OK, so I hope that makes so much sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. So how do you guys, cause oh, I'm going to answer your question. How to get guys to start spoiling you. Oh, it's so funny. So anyways, um, I do get spoiled. Uh, I wake up in the morning and I go straight to like, you know, my little seat on the couch to, you know, start going through emails and YouTube comments and, you know, Skype messages and just basically working. And as soon as I come down the stairs, Andrew gets up, makes my tea, delivers it to me at the couch, makes me breakfast, does my laundry, does all the dishes, <laughs> just short of cutting my steak. And how did I create that? I just simply said it, you know, Andrew does everything for me that makes me feel good. You know, he, he loves to be helpful around the house. He loves to, you know, spoil me. He loves to, and I even, I even specifically said, he brings me my tea every morning. He does all the laundry. He does all the dishes because I personally don't like those chores. I cook and that's my chore in the house. Right. And I've got my, a few other chores that I do. So we, you know, I feel spoiled because I don't need to do the chores. I don't like, I do the chores I like. So, but he doesn't like cooking. He likes doing laundry. He likes doing dishes. So he feels spoiled. So you can create it mutually. But yeah, you just start listing out everything the person does for you that makes you feel spoiled. What is spoiled? Okay, so spoiled to one person may not be the same as another. For instance, you may like doing laundry and you're a specific person doing laundry. You're like, hey, that's I like do, doing it. Like, I don't want you to do it. Some people love cleaning. Some people hate cleaning. So define if say, for instance, you love cleaning and, you know, you say, well, they spoil me and then they start cleaning 
and taken, you know, the, the thing that you love to do away um, to spoil you, then you're not feeling spoiled. So list out what spoiled means to you and then start intending what you're going to see, hear and feel when you start getting spoiled, what the other person's going to think about it, you know, and always intend that you feel spoiled. And, you know, and people tell you, oh, he spoils you. I'm like, I love that. Yeah. You can write them or say them out loud, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you know, if I start working on something new, I write them out and then I read them a few times a day just to get them familiar. And then they'll be just be on autopilot throughout the day. But one thing I want to say is never stop affirming what you want until you see it in your 3D. Like seriously, especially if there's resistance, it's not enough to just be like, okay, I've said it till I'm comfortable with it. I'm going to let it go. No, no, you never let go of what you're creating. You always let go of your negative story. You can never say I'm a billionaire enough because as soon as you become a billionaire, you have to keep saying you're a billionaire because the minute you say something different, you're going to get something different. Okay. And there's no way to have no thoughts to be void of thoughts. There's absolutely no way. So, you know, always keep saying what you want to have in your life. Always focus on what's good. Always focus on what you want to see more of. Okay. How do you deal with a mental diet while manifesting money in an SP? Do you say buy groceries and affirm in your head that you can afford anything? And um, for your SP, do you pretend they are beside you all the time? Okay. So you know what? Funny story. <laughs> story time. Funny story. You guys need a, a sip of pop here. It's Canada Day. Drinking my diet caffeine um, uh, Coke. I love it. I love it. My Coke. But uh. anyway, um, so... For your SP, I, okay. <laughs> okay. I remember way back when years ago, I was new at manifesting, right? And, um, you know, and somebody said, oh, feng shui, you know what? If you want to manifest somebody, okay, you've got to basically like clean out half your closet for them. You've got to empty like the nightstand on their side of the bed. And you've got to just pretend that they're with you every minute of the day. So I started doing that. Okay. I cleaned out the side of the nightstand. I, you know, cleaned out half my closet. I even remember one of my friends coming over going, why is half your closet empty? And of course I didn't want to say, oh, because I'm manifesting somebody. Right. Um, you know, so I'm like, well, I'm just, you know, I cleaned it out and you know, there's just room for, you know, I was like room for me to expand, meaning someone's going to come into my life. So that was all fine and dandy, but what I wasn't doing was I wasn't being on a mental diet of what I wanted to create. So taking those physical actions of pretending they were there with me having dinner, but at the same time, I was on a terrible mental diet of going, where is he? Why isn't this working? You know, why doesn't he want to be with me? And all these other things. Okay. So then I was like, and then I was like, no, you know what? My intention is totally wrong here. I'm doing this the wrong way. I'm changing my physical reality right? And, but I'm not working on my inner world, right? So the minute I started working on my inner world, that's when things started shifting in and I ended up manifesting the person. So in hindsight, I didn't need to clean out the closet. I didn't need to clean out the nightstand. What I needed to do was, yes, you can pretend that they're there with you all the time. I personally didn't do that this time around manifesting Andrew, but I have done that in the past. But over and above that, you have to change your story right? Why they're not with you. Okay. So it's all fine and dandy to sit down and go, okay, you know what? We're pretending we're eating dinner and you pretend that you're there eating dinner with them and you're pretending of the conversations you're having with them. That's great. But you have to work on your fundamental beliefs of why you guys aren't together to begin with. Okay. So if I say, well, you know what? I intend for my boyfriend to make me bacon and eggs every morning. Okay. And if, let's say Jerry is the boyfriend I'm talking about, but me and Jerry aren't boyfriend, girlfriend yet. Jerry will still cook me breakfast, but then he'll say, I don't want to be in a relationship because I haven't dealt with the resistance of him not wanting to be in a relationship. So yes, you can picture them there all the time with you, but then we also have to work on the story of why you don't think that you guys are together right now. Okay. Because there's no reason why they can't instantly say, yeah, I want to be there right now. You know what I mean? So, you know, as I wouldn't say pretending they're there all the time with you is the most effective way. I would say writing out all of your doubts. Okay. Why do you not think that you guys are together? What do you think that they think about you? Do they want to be with you? What are all your negative thoughts that you have rolling around to create them not wanting to be with you or for the relationship not happening? Is it because, oh, well, you know, I've got to lose five pounds before I get in a relationship or, you know what, he's um, a player, he's scared of commitment. Like those stories need to be changed at that level. Your beliefs and assumptions of the person 
always have to be changed. Okay. But there's nothing wrong with, you know, it, you know, and having that inner conversation, pretending there with, with you at dinner, pretending you're there all the time with you, you are, you know, creating that to happen at some point in the future, but that wouldn't necessarily be the block. Because if you're doing that and you had zero blocks and zero resistance to them wanting to be with you, that would happen instantly. Okay. All manifestation is instant. The only thing that actually slows it down are our previous thoughts and beliefs that are contrary to those things we desire. Do you get what I'm saying? So how would you deal with a mental diet when manifesting money? Okay. I manifest money. Very good at manifesting money, right? Money just flows in. In fact, I just manifested like a $700 refund for something that I bought. And there was like, no, this is the price. And then they phoned me the next day. They're like, oh, we were going to refund you $700. And I was like, yeah, of course you are. Right. Checks in the mail all the time, constantly. So, you know, the thing is, right, is when you're manifesting money, okay, the first thing I did, and this is what worked for me. Okay. I had anxiety over money. Okay. So I created a budget. I thought budgets were stupid my whole life. Okay. People create a budget, create a budget. I'm like, no, I'm not creating a budget. But then I realized was, as I had anxiety that I didn't know how much money I had for groceries. I would worry if I spent money, you know, on a bill, if I would have enough for rent, I would just worry when I was spending money that if there was enough money for everything I had. So for, in order for me to eliminate that, I created a budget and said, okay, this is how much money I have coming in a month. This goes to rent, that goes to car, that goes to bills, that goes to this, that goes to that. And then I would have a lump sum of play money money that I could actually play with and spend on whatever I wanted. Now me doing that actually eliminated my money anxiety. And then I was actually even saving a little portion. So then what would happen is, is every time I'd go to spend money, I'd be like, oh, you know what? Every dollar I spend, I get a thousand dollars back in like a day and just absurd amounts. Okay. Just out of the blue. Right. Um, you know, every dollar I spend, I, I get so much back. Um, and I would do it when I was spending money, because again, remember, like I said, my block was, is I'd have anxiety when I went to spend money. So I created the budget. And then when I was spending money, I made sure that I had my little mantra that I manifested more money for every dollar I spent within a week. Okay. And then what would also happen is, is I would get bills and then I would freak out like, Oh my God, am I going to have enough? And then I'm like, no, I've got more than enough money to pay this bill. So like, for instance, an example, my car insurance was coming up and you know, I was like, Oh, I'm like, um, I don't know if I'm going to, I was like, no, I'm going to have more than enough money to pay for my car insurance. I'm actually going to have like 10 times more in my savings account than that car insurance bill is going to be at the end of the year. I think you guys call them car notes in the States, but we call them car insurance in our bill, like our loan payments. But anyway, Anyways, I would have more than enough money for that. And I would constantly do that. I would have more than enough money for everything. But again, you know, just like when it comes to manifesting the SP, you know, these surface thoughts are fine, but what fundamentally are your blocks, right? You want to write out all your negative beliefs about money. Okay. And every thought that causes you anxiety and then change it into a positive intention and focus on those new intentions for a couple days to get them flowing. And then also listen to yourself. Like, you know, when you think about money or a bill coming, are you getting anxiety or are you in that peaceful, relaxed state going, yeah, you know what? I got more than enough money to pay for that. What's your story that you tell other people? Are you calling up, you know, your mom, your sister to help you out because you don't quite have enough money, you know, to, to make ends meet right? Then, okay, there now we've got to even revise that even more. Okay. Well, you would say to yourself, sure, I've got to borrow money right now, but I'm going to have like, you know, 10 times more than that to pay them back next month. So you've got to watch what your story is to people. Do you know what I mean? So what you're thinking, what you're sharing with other people, because we create in language, we create when we talk to others, we create in their listening, right? So if I was to say right now, you know, I'm absolutely amazing. And everything always works out for me. I've just created that in my reality just by sharing it with you. So we always want to be careful about what we actually say, right? So yeah, I do affirm in my head that I can afford anything. Um, you know, the other thing that I do is money is made up. I remember I watched this money documentary and it was so funny. It was, did you know, back in like the day they used to like trade like like um, spices and sheep and cattle and stuff like as currency. So this, and then it was like precious metals and like, and tea. I mean, all these things, sugar was, you know, basically currency back in the day. So 
really, when you think about it, it's just we've given it a value and then we trade with it. But it's really just made up. Like, I mean, my biggest breakthrough was when I thought about it and I'm like, you know what? The numbers on my bank account are just made up. All this is just made up. It's just energy. Right. So the other thing, right, is not, you know, being is like when you spend money, if you've got that thought of, oh, my God, you know, the money's going away, the money's going away. It's going to be like, no, you know, the money keeps flowing. The money keeps flowing. But again, it's what is unique to you. What thoughts give you anxiety? Those are the thoughts that we need to change. Okay. And you know, you're doing a mental diet correctly, whether it's money or an SP is because you'll be free of that anxiety. Okay. When you've done your mental diet and your intentions enough, you'll be free of that anxiety and you'll feel neutral about it. And then at that neutral stage, what you want to do is keep intending. Don't stop intending until you get it. Even once you get it, you still have to keep intending. So from the day I met Andrew, I intended that we would be in a committed relationship living together. Well, here we are. We're actually engaged. Okay, great. Now, do I ever get to say anything other than that? No, I still have to intend every once in a while, granted not as much, that he wants to be with me. I can't start turning around talking to my friends and Jerry saying, oh, Andrew doesn't want to be with me because I'm going to shift it the other way. So, you know, as long as you want something in your life, you have to keep reaffirming that you have that specific thing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. So keep asking myself why to get to the core beliefs on the relationship, why I don't have it. No, no, don't ask yourself why you don't have it. Say you have it. Say you have it now. You know, your core beliefs are going to be things like, you know, you know, for instance, you know, if you, you have the, the core belief could be I'm the best girlfriend ever, ever. And everybody wants to be with me or core belief can be like, that's a player. So it's just your beliefs. I mean, don't question where your beliefs come from. You know, that's another thing, right? Is never question why you think something. There is no reason why you think something it, it you know, I remember, you know, with Andrew, he, he was previously married and he didn't want to be in a commitment because he said he had a terrible previous marriage and, you know, he just didn't want to do it again to me. And, um, I was like, okay. And then I was trying to figure out for a whole weekend. I'm like, when did I create that? When did I create that? When did I create that? And all of a sudden a girlfriend of mine called me up and she was like, she reminded me of like a weekend where we were like hanging out and having a great time partying when I was 20 years old or something. And she was like, Oh, you know, and she told me about the weekend. And then she's like, remember when, you know, that old guy that was previously married, you know, and he, and you, we went on and we were talking about how old guys, they've got, you know, commitment issues and they don't want to be in a, in a relationship again, if they've, you know, if they've been divorced. And I was like, that was it. But guess what? Knowing when I created it didn't change how I had to fix it. I still had to fix it. So it doesn't matter when you created it. It just matters how you created it. So in my case, I didn't create Andrew not wanting to commit to me because of anything to do with me. I had created him to not want to commit to me because remember, guys that were previously married had baggage and didn't want to be in a committed relationship. So, you know, don't spend a whole long time trying to figure out where your beliefs came from you know, um, how you created them, you know, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So it's been five months of constant mental diet. Sorry, intentions, either one, they're the same and affirmation. Why am I creating this time? It's never taken this long before. Well, again, why it doesn't matter why. So we start saying, you know what, it is going to happen. It's going to happen now. Right. You know, it, a lot of times the reason why things take so long, there is hope is because, at the end of the day, it's the, you know, our belief. Okay. So, I mean, I've got major faith and belief that I could seriously move mountains with my thoughts. Okay. But that's come from experience and years and years of doing this and being disciplined, focused, intending, I see how to create intending. I understand it. Don't get me wrong. I still create junk in my life that absolutely annoys me to no end sometimes, but that's my choice. Okay. That doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing. That just means that I've had a few bad thoughts and they've shown up, but the more faith you have, okay, the easier it is to change something, right? Because they're not going to have that internal fight. So what I would suggest to do is do those little lists of little manifestations, right? Really dig in, you know, and, and figure out and see how everyone as you pushed out works and constantly remind yourself of that every day. So, you know, the other day I was having a fight in my head about something, trying to recreate somebody. And I was just so ruminating on this old story about this person. And then I remembered something that happened earlier in the day where I had this moment of everyone is 
as you pushed out and that magical feeling because I was like, of course you were thinking that. And then all of a sudden I went, oh, Maddie, you know what? You've been like totally on this story about, you know, this person, like you need to change it. And then boom, like that, I shifted into a better headspace about it. So if you don't know where you're going wrong in your mental diet, check into how you feel, Okay. If you feel anxious, then yeah, we're not doing a mental diet. Um, you know, you're going to feel neutral. You're going to feel normal. I mean, do you wake up every morning and go, yeah, I'm God and I'm getting what I want today? Or do we wake up and we're like, oh, another day and here we go again. So what's your headspace at? You know what I mean? But I mean, as far as, you know, how, why it's taking you this long, first of all, don't say it's taking you this long. Say you're getting it. You're getting it now. It's already happening. It's already happened. It's done. Right. And then other than that, I would look into what, you know, the blocks are. Why don't you ask yourself? Because questioning is a block right? Listen to your thoughts. Okay. Listen to your thoughts and change the thoughts that are not in line with your end goal. Questioning is always a block. Okay. Always a block. It doesn't matter why it doesn't matter where it came from. Questioning is a block. You're not focusing on what you want. You're focusing on what you don't want. Maybe I've misunderstood your, your quest, like what you were saying, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't take any time asking myself any questions. I would just go straight to this is what I want. Um, because there is, you, you can answer your own questions, right? Because <laughs> you're the only one in, in your reality, right? So yeah, I remember when I did coaching and people would be like, well, you know, I'm questioning, I'm questioning. And I'm like, who are you asking? Who are you expecting to answer you? It's only you. <laughs> you choose, right? You make up your own answer then. But I would skip questioning all, all, all entirely, all entirely. So anyways, guys, you guys are all absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, oh, my goodness. Someone's spamming stuff. Um, yeah, I've done many stories and videos on how I manifest my SP and mentoring. Um, actually, and I post on Jerry's Adventures, um, our relationship and stuff and Ani's on there. So links in the description below. So yeah. How do you use the law of uh, assumption to find your passion? You say, I intend to find my passion. I intend to find what I'm passionate about. Right. I mean, you know, what, what do you like doing? What, you know, basically just takes your time. I mean, for instance, for me, I mean, this has been a half an hour of this live and it seems like two minutes for me. So, you know, that's something I enjoy doing. I enjoy helping people to change their lives and to create things that they love, just like every coach here does at Create Your Future. Um, you know, and but it, my sister loves making like stuff with her cricket. She loves making little clay dragons and eggs and they're absolutely gorgeous, you know, and um, that's her passion. That's what she loves. So, you know, everybody's got, you know, the different things that they love. Just ask yourself, what's my passion? You know, and, um, you know, what, what could you do every day that you absolutely love? Right. So, or you could just start intending that something's your passion. You could just start saying, I'm passionate about, you know, doing this. I'm passionate about doing that. Um, and you create that you're passionate about it. You'll call the feeling into yourself and you will become passionate about it. Right. You know, so yeah. You can also create, you know, I intend to feel good. I intend to feel satisfied, um, you know, things like that. And you'll actually call those emotions into you and start feeling like that because you also create your emotions as well. Right. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. If you guys would like um, to ask me a question, please post them on the Patreon. That's absolutely amazing. And yeah. Thank you guys all so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And we will see you guys in the next video. And to all my Canadian neighbors and friends out there, happy Canada Day. And for everybody in the States, happy 4th of July, because that's in a couple days for you guys. So yeah, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.